Hello everybody, it's the last week before the Seville Marathon, so I'm getting a bit nervous now, but so I thought I'd give you a bit of an update to see how uh, things have been going and whether I'm on track. Now, in the true tradition of uh, running YouTubers, um, you have to introduce one's cat. So here's Daisy here, um, looking as, uh, as, as, as uh, streamlined as usual. So, <laughs> what do you think of things with Daisy? Right, off you go. <laughs> So let's go to the uh, little uh, PowerPoint that I like to do with these things. So just a quick reminder of my previous marathons. This will be my fourth marathon. Uh, first was in 2004, 2005. 2005 was my PB, 233 there. Uh, last one was four years ago. So this time around, now age 53, my target will be to just duck, duck under a sub three marathon if I can. So what's been going on? So the last time I did an update three weeks ago, I just done the Farnborough Half Marathon and I did 124.53 there. So I was quite pleased with that, sort of 6.30 pace um, compared to about 6.50 pace that I need to do a sub three. And I'm just sort of recovering from having fallen over, then a hamstring pull, then a cold. So I think I've um, come on a bit since then. I've done uh, sort of three weeks of training. So I had a 70 mile week and a 60 mile week and he was back a bit last week at the 40. And in, in that time, I got in two long runs. One was a 20-mile run that I did on the Downs Link, the old railway that goes between Guildford and the South Coast. Um, it was on a terrible um, day. It was like really wet and muddy. Um, so it was a real slog. So I was rather pleased to get through that. And then the following week, I did a rather encouraging long run. I sort of tried something new there for us. For, um, for I tried something new because normally I don't like to uh, mix up long runs and marathon pace, but I thought um, I'll try and kill two birds with one stone. So I put the vapor flyers on. We drove out to uh, Stockbridge in Hampshire where I found a seven mile circuit, mainly on the road, a bit, bit rolling. So it's not, uh, wasn't too uh, easy. So I did the first lap steady about 7.30 pace and I picked up to marathon pace, averaged about I think I was about just under 6.50. And then I did seven more miles um, in uh, to finish it off at about seven. So I think I averaged about 7.15 for the whole run. So I was pleased with that. And I've also done a 10 mile um, and a 10K marathon pace tempo where I also hit the target. And I've done uh, the weekly uh, Wednesday workout on Zwift for the last three weeks just to get, get the old bit of a speed a bit quicker than pace. So here's a summary of my training updated now until yesterday. Um, so we're seeing here 2020, the key mileage is 58 uh, miles a week for the preceding 14 weeks, um, which is actually fairly similar to what I'd done before on uh, my very first one, a uh, bit somewhat less than my marathon PB uh, now 15 years ago. And a bit less than the last time, but I'm getting older now, so it needs to uh, needs to work on these things. You can see that by the average pace, 746, although my average heart rate's also come down in that time. So um, in terms of long runs, I've got in, as I said, two more long runs since there. So I've got up to seven long runs in that, um, in this training block. Um, quite a few medium runs, but mainly around the, sort of the 10 mile mark. So I've done 20, just over 10. And 29 between 10 and 10 and 19. So I've got a reasonable amount of uh, decent runs in. I think here's another view of the mileage in terms of mileage per week. So um, most of my mileage this time has been hovering around the 50 and the 60 mark. With a couple of weeks, I managed to get to 70. So not too bad. These are again my recent races, and no further update. I decided then not to do another park run in the end. Um, conditions last two weekends were terrible, weren't they, with the, the wet and the wind? So it didn't seem like a great idea. So I just focused on doing a few more of those marathon pace runs. And so the last week, then, what's uh, what's on the cards? Well, definitely not a lot, really. Um, I've done five miles easy today. I'm just trying to feel a bit uh, more lively. Uh, I think I'll just try and get out for one day where I'll do some um, a shortish marathon pace run, maybe for about three or four miles. Let's see how that is, just to sort of uh, reassure myself I can still run that that um, distance. I'm travelling out on Thursday. Uh, I'm not going straightly there because <laughs> we've got a place in Portugal which is not far from Seville, so I'm going to go there first and then uh, meet my wife and I'm going to go over on Saturday. 
No, no, what time do you think I'll get? So I've been looking at some marathon predictors. So let's move to them. So the first one is on my trusty Garmin watch here. Now you can see this is quite amusing. This was this was literally the uh, the other day when I took a screenshot, uh, and you can see it's predicting my marathon at three hours and three seconds. Now the uh, the latest Garmin's have got a lot better race predictors than they had originally when this re uh, feature originally came on. So interesting to see there. My five k, ten k, and half marathon times are all pretty similar so to what I've actually done in, in the build up. So I did a seventeen fifty nine park run on Christmas Day. I did a, that 124.53 half, although probably not at full power, I don't think. And I did a 37, 37.10k in the summer and a 37.59 I mean, it was quite a windy day uh, just before Christmas. So it's all looking uh, sort of in, in the margins of possibilities. Um, I perhaps would have preferred to see a two there, but maybe we'll have time later this week to see that. If I look at a few others though, maybe not so good. So Metathon actually links up with your Strava and tries to work it out based on how much miles you've done and the pace. Now, this all seems to be rather, rather um, pessimistic. So actually eight weeks ago, I got to 301. I think that was before I had my fall. And it's actually been getting worse uh, since then. So four weeks ago, it was 305. That was around about the time of the half marathon. Uh, hasn't moved a great deal. I think because I've had a bit of a taper last week, it's actually dropped back. So um, I'm not sure that I'm really thinking this is quite right. So hopefully that, we'll ignore that one. If we look at, um, say, age grading, so I've got my 124.53 program in here, which um, is probably the best estimate of a marathon, is a half marathon. If I flip to see what that gives uh, for the marathon, Let's just hit that. So 78.81% age graded. And if I hit the marathon result, I get 258.45. So that's uh, that's encouraging. That's, that's the right right side of it. Um, if I look at the Macmillan calculator, I've put this in before. So there's my half marathon, 124.53. And that's predicting 258.38 for the marathon. So... So that's encouraging. If I go back up the chart here, um, my 10K based on that half marathon is only 38.05 and I did that 37.59 on a windy day. And then my 5K is only predicting 18.20. So kind of showing I'm probably better at um, better at the shorter distances. And I had that good 10 mile race in the Great South Run where I did 101.40. So again, it's predicting I only uh, would have done 103 based on that half marathon time. So that one looks like I'm on the right side of things. Um, if we move along now to the this one, I found this one, the Slate Marathon Time Predictor. This actually takes your weekly mileage average. So that's the 58 that I've actually done. I plugged in the half marathon and my park run on Christmas Day, and I get 303.53. So Another one where it's taking your mileage and your times and marking me down a bit. So I'm hoping this one's not quite right. If we then move on to fetch everybody. Now he did some analysis of all the people's times, I think, based on his um, people inputting data into his side. I don't actually use it for my recording my training, but um, I like to look here occasionally. So and he had an article published in The Guardian uh, a year or two back, I think, where he went into some detail. So what do I get here? 124.53 only gives me a 3.711. Uh, not so good. And interestingly, if I was a female, then I would get a 303. Still the wrong side of a sub three. Now, some of you may not actually run the power of 10 run rankings. So I thought, well, better way to actually look at my own stats. So um, this is a view, a custom view, uh, which I... Uh, can do where I'm showing basically the last year's marathon rankings in the UK with people's half marathon uh, year best last year. So what I'm looking for here is to see how many of these people ran slower than 84.53 and still broke two uh, broke three hours for marathon. Now there's definitely are a few here. There's an 85.24 there, there's an 87 minutes there, there's an 85 there. 
some of these times were slow. Maybe they didn't race these ones full out. If you go further up though, uh, there's an 86 there at 2.59. So I think most people probably run a bit quicker than 84.53, but certainly um, enough people didn't. Um, and if you flick the other side of the three hour barrier, um, you've got people, you know, it's a, more in the right ballpark there. So yeah, it's all encouraging, I think. Now, because of the coronavirus, is, um, so the Tokyo Marathon has been cancelled. There's a few people I know that actually got a last minute entry to Seville. One of them, uh, Paul, I, I know a bit, he's um, hoping to run a sub three as well, having done a few recently. So maybe he'll be a good guy to uh, team up with. I think the weather is going to be sort of um, obviously a bit milder than it is here. I think uh, the race starts at half past eight in the morning. Temperature usually is around about 10 degrees C at that time of day and it rises to about um, 20 degrees, but probably after three hours, um, only about 18. So it'll be a bit warm, but um, hopefully not uh, hopefully not too bad. And uh, just need to make sure to keep, keep the fluids up and um, I'm probably run with a couple of Morton gels to keep me going um, throughout the race. I've been trying a few of those during training, not going too bad. So um, I think I just need to uh, get to the line, give it a go and um, enjoy it. And, um, you know, because I'm not exactly going to be uh, doing a PB, <laughs> uh, I think uh, probably a personal worst, which is uh, always a bit of a strange uh, thing to say, but uh, it's, you know, something you need to, uh, something you need to sort of uh, accept as you get older, I'm afraid, but, uh, you know, age, uh, they say age is only a number. Well, <laughs> only up to a point. Um, but uh, anyway, so enjoy the process, still enjoy running and um, even more just trying to sort of uh, work through all this stuff and uh, and hope that some of you can benefit as well. So um, look forward to uh, telling you all about it and see you on the next one. Okay, bye.